All right, we're about to get started here for the uh, Classic City Showdown, JV style here at Billy Henderson Stadium. Nice weather, meetings out uh, midfield with the captains. For the Glads, we got Jabriel Parks, Jaqua Daniels, and Kenyante, Young, Kenyante Jones. Excuse me. And for the Jaguars, from Cedar Shoals, we got Greg Smith, Malik Burton, and Chandler Boskett. And one unnumbered guy out there, 71. Must have been a graduate from the uh, C team or something. Came down from varsity, I'm not sure. <clears throat> Getting the coin toss going here. Looks like Clark Central won. They're going to defer to the second half. Clock says we got five minutes to kick off. Usually don't get the uh, coin toss going this soon. Maybe we'll move it up a little bit. I don't have any lineups or anything. I just got rosters, so I'll be back in a minute. All right, getting ready for kickoff here. Ten-minute quarters. Gladiators in the uh, yellow bottoms, red tops, yellow helmets, kicking off left to right. It's going to be picked up by Jaguar at his own 10-yard line, out to the 20, 25, brought down hard. Whoever that gladiator was lost his helmet. That was 51, Frankie Smith for the gladiators. Big tackle. That'll get this still filing in crowd a little excited. Looks like we got some varsity players coming over to watch the, the younger guys take on the crosstown rival. So it'll be Jaguar ball first and ten at their own 25. 0 0 here. 9.50 left in the first quarter. Jags are in a gun. Handoff's going to go around to the left side, pick up maybe six or seven yards there.
Going to call it a gain around seven there. It's going to be second and three coming up. In a running back is Tremaris Kelly. Starting quarterback, Greg Smith, captain for this team. He's only a freshman. So we might get a couple of years starting on the varsity squad here in the future. We're going to have a penalty on the Glads. It's going to move it up a little bit. First and 10 here at the 37-yard line of the Jaguars. Smith's back in the gun. Handoff's going to go to Kelly again around the right side. He's got five, maybe four or five yards. Same play they ran earlier, but to the opposite side. Going to test the edge of the Glad's defense. <coughs> Call it four, second and six coming up. Smith going to stay back in the shotgun. Got two receivers here to the left, one to the right. Handoff again, go to Kelly. He's actually going to fake the handoff, brought down behind the line of scrimmage by number 25, Kenyante Jones, tackled in the backfield. Great play there by Jones. That's going to bring up a third and long for the Jaguars. Jaguars fake that play again to Kelly. Jones sniffed it out real quick, brought down uh, Smith in the backfield. Nice play there. Third and ten coming up. Jags got four receivers out. Smith and Jones, I mean Smith and Kelly back in the backfield. He's going to look to throw. He's got a receiver right. He hits him short of the first down marker. He's going to pick up two or three, still shy of the first down marker. It's going to bring up fourth and maybe four or five, depending on where they give him his forward progress. I'm going to say he came back on his own accord, so they're going to mark him all the way back. It's going to be about fourth and six. Mark it at the Gladiator 41. Looks like they're going to choose to punt. Their punter happens to be their quarterback, so things could get interesting with him at some point in the game if they want to go that route. Part returners for the Glad standing back at their own 30. It's going to be Jaquad Daniels picking it up at the 20, 25. We're ahead to the 30, out to the 35. Brought down to maybe the 36. Looks like they've cut the grass since the last time they painted out there. So could get a little dicey with me telling you where the uh, what yard line it is. Do my best here with the sun. Going to be Gladiators ball at their own 36-yard line. Looks like it's Olin Keto in a quarterback. Stokes and Daniels behind him. They're in an eye. Two receivers off the left side. Handoff's going to go to Daniels straight ahead, running hard, but met at the line, pushes ahead for a couple. Going to be about second and eight. Six fourteen left here in the first quarter. Call it second and seven. Zero zero. Jaguars receive the ball to start the game. They punted to the Glads. Glads moving left to right now. Olin Keto back in a gun. Daniels beside him. Two receivers off to the left side. He's going to roll out to his left, looking to throw. He's got a man open. He hits him. That looks like Smothers tackled at the forty-five of the Jaguars. Excuse me, Isaac Butler. Smothers must be number eight for the C team. Getting a little mixed up, going back and forth between the Gladiators teams. Same number, different squad. Sorry about that, Isaac. Nice catch by Butler for the first down, all the way down to the Jaguars, 47. Olinkita is going to hand it off to Stokes straight ahead for a couple. Maybe three. Hey, 
Got to give it to Stokes every once in a while to test that middle of the defense. A little, mix it in with him a little bit. I think he averages maybe five or six carries a game. Second eight at the Glads, 45. 5'11 here left in the first. Only kid is going to hand it off to Daniels around the left side, and he's got maybe three or four. Brought down by number 26, Deshaun Arnold, sophomore defensive back for Cedar Shoals. Those kind of plays that aren't too much fun for a defensive back. Jaquad Daniels is that kind of guy. Keeps getting stronger as the game goes on. Big pounding back. When this team plays well, that's the kind of guy they uh, they lean on a lot. Olin Keto looking to throw. He's got a man, but there's a flag down. This one's probably coming back. It's only a pickup of maybe a one or so. I think one of our guys jumped. Pass went to Derricott, and it is going to go against the Glads. False start, moving back five. So we got a third and long here. Going to be just a couple yards shy of getting moved all the way back to midfield. They're going to decline the penalty, so it's going to be fourth down. So the Derricott reception did go for about a yard. It's going to be fourth and three here at the 40-yard line of the Jaguars, and the Glads are going for it. Two receivers out to either side. Glads in an eye. Stokes with Daniels behind him. Play fake, Olenkito rolling out to his left. He's got Stokes wide open. Stokes got the first down all the way down to the 30. Knocked out of bounds just shy of the 25. Huge fourth down conversion there for the Gladiators. Faked it to Daniels, ran to the line, had his fullback out in the flats, hit him. Nobody there to stop him. Easy 10-yard pickup play there. Nice toss by Olin Keto, who was under some serious pressure. Had to get that pass off. Still got some touch on it. Nice play by the Gladiator quarterback. 3.38 left in the first. Clark Central ball at the 28-yard line of the Cedar Shoals. In an offset eye, they're going to toss it to Daniels, who picks up maybe four or five running ahead. Got four or five more yards after contact. They're going to say it's a 12-yard gain. Huge run there by Daniels. Got hit short of the first down marker. Spun off a guy, broke a tackle. Kid's just running hard. He's really important to this team. Another first down for the Gladiators. Putting together a nice drive here. Inside the 20 down to the 16. Gladiators trying to get lined up, and I don't think they got a guy off the field in time. I think they had 12 guys out in the huddle. Stokes realized it before the official did, I believe. A little odd, usually they get them with that coming out of the huddle, but they were lined up with 12. So that's going to move them back. First and 15, going to hand it off to Daniel straight ahead. He's going to pick up that five. So it's going to be a second and 10. 2.20 left in the first. Second 10, just inside two minutes left on the first. 
Four receivers out. Olenkito back in a gun. He's going to look to throw. Got a Derek Cott open. He makes a couple guys miss. He's going to pick up six or seven, but there's a flag down. Derek Cott almost worked his way down on the first down, but I don't think it's going to matter. Probably going to be a second and 16 coming up here for the Gladiators. It is going to go against the Gladiators, but I missed the signal. They're going to walk them back 10 all the way to the 26. Must have been a hold on somebody. Flag was thrown out towards the, uh, the far left hash mark, so it could have been another receiver, possibly a tackle on that side. Second and 18 here. Olonquito looking to throw. He's got a man down towards the goal line and just overthrew him. That was Desmond Sorrells. Had it been a couple of feet shorter, Sorrells would have caught it right around the goal line and trotted into the end zone for six points. But now we're looking at a third and very long. At the 25. This is not usually JV field goal range. So they're going to need to pick up some yardage and either go for it on a long fourth down or pick up about two-thirds of this to have a reasonable shot at three points. Glad they're going to call a timeout and think things over. I'll be back in a minute. bit left. Probably put all he had into it. If it would have gone through, maybe made it by a couple of yards. Just pulled a little bit. Nice try by the uh, the kicker there. 43 yards is a long kick for the NFL. So, 22 seconds left here in the first. Jags are going to take over after the failed field goal attempt at the 20 20 yard line. First and 10. 
Smith back in the gun. He's going to hand it off to Kelly. Starts out right, tries to cut it back inside. He's got seven. He's got eight all the way down just to the first down marker. They're going to say he's got ten on the run. Got a timeout on the field. Excuse me, that's the end of the first quarter. We're going to switch directions. No score at the end of the first quarter. Glad's had a nice long drive. Stalled by penalties down inside the red zone of the Jags. Pushed it back for a long field goal. Just not quite in the range of Zabodak. But nice job possessing the ball by the offense for the yellow team. This is the last game of the season for both of these squads. Big crosstown rivalry. I'm sure some of these guys know each other from the other school. Like to have bragging rights going into next year. Maybe some of these guys will be playing for the varsity squad next year. Possibly even called up for the varsity game this year. Add some depth. But for a lot of these guys, it's the last football. Organized football game until September. So after Kelly's run to end the half, it's going to be Jags ball first and 10 at the 31. Looks like Snoop Burdett's going to take over running back. Kelly's out of the game now. Smith back in the gun. They're going to run an option. There's going to pitch it to Burdett. Stop behind the line. Two-yard loss. Nice play by the Glads defense. Led by six, Derek Cott. Nice play by a defensive back to come up and stop that option play. Jags got four wide. Burdett's still in it. Tailback. Second and 12. Rolling out to the right, looking to throw under a lot of pressure. And they got him. Got him behind the line for a sack. Back for about four yards, maybe all the way down to the 24-yard line. Nice play there by the Glads. Number 43, Tevion, excuse me, number 43, Kevin Irwin. Jaguars looking at a long third down of their own here. Third and 18 all the way back to their 24. 8.35 left in the second quarter. Score is 0-0. Smith back in the gun. He's got four receivers looking to throw. He's got a man down the sideline. Just under throws him. He was looking for Breon Mitchell. Wide receiver who also plays a little quarterback for the Jaguars. Would have had to have been a great throw. Not a lot of open room there for Mitchell down the sideline. And that's going to bring on the punt team. So back for the glad stand in midfield. Jaquad Daniels and Desmond Sorrells. Should be some good field position here for the Jaguars. Kick is high, end over end. Sorrell, I mean, Quad Daniels is going to catch it under immediate pressure. He's hit by a couple guys, still holds on to the ball all the way down to the 45. I think I would have called a fair catch on that. But Daniels holds on. It's going to be first and 10 glads. Nice job holding on there by Daniels. So Olin Keto and crew come out. First and ten. 
Clark Central moving right to left at their own 45. 8-11 left until the half. It's Stokes and Daniels behind them in an eye. Olin Kiddo dropping back, looking to throw. He's got a receiver. Defensive back fell down. It's a catch all the way down to the 40. Finally brought down by two guys. Completes to Marcus Dalton. Olin Keto, four for five on the day, 50 yards through the air, 750 left until half. First catch of the day by Dalton. He and Marka Campbell are a couple guys that they do look to a lot. Offset eye, first and 10 at the Jags 40. Toss is going to go to Daniels. He's following Stokes. He's out to the right. He's got three or four. He's hit by a couple guys. Finally brought down. Looks like maybe three yards all the way down to the 27. Second and seven coming up. Seven minutes left until the half. Olenkito's going to roll out. He's under pressure. He's looking to throw. He dumps it off to Stokes, who's got a few yards. Didn't have a chance to look for an option down the field under pressure right from the get-go, but he somehow uh, rolled out and got away from a couple guys, dumped it off to Stokes, picked up a few more. Looking at third and three here. This is almost certainly four-down territory for the Gladiators. I'd expect to see Jaquad Daniels take it a couple of times if he doesn't get it on the first try. Third and three, six minutes left in the second. Two receivers out to the right side, Glad's in an eye. Handoff is going to go to Daniels straight ahead, and he's got the first down, runs over a guy. Number 38, Golden Brown, is going to get tired of coming up and making tackles in Jaquad Daniels. First and ten, Glads at the 17 of the Jaguars. Clark Central trying to punch one in here before the half. 540 left. Handoff's going to go to Jaquad Daniels, running hard through the middle. Line's going to push ahead, and he's got six yards. Jaquad Daniels really running hard, and Setting the tone for this offense here. He's closing in on 50 yards, roughly. Nice game for the uh, central premier tailback on this JV squad. I wouldn't be surprised if he's one of the guys that gets a chance at varsity. Olin Keto dropping back, looking to throw. He's got a receiver in the end zone. A little bit of contact, no flag, and it's going to fall incomplete. He was trying to get it to uh, number six, Derricott, over in the far corner. Derricott was covered by Deshaun Arnold. Would have had to have been a jump ball completion. Derricott's not a huge guy. So that's going to bring up a third and five here for the Gladiators. 4.50 left. Daniels is the single back with two receivers out. Olin is going to drop back and look to throw. He's got Sorrells. Makes one guy miss. He's going to work his way up, but just shy of the first down. Looks like he's about a yard shy. So that's going to bring up fourth and one. Nice play there by Desmond Sorrells, making the first guy miss. Sliding ahead for a couple of more. Gladiators all the way down to the nine-yard line. 
fourth and one here, and they are going to go for it. 4.15 and rolling here until the second half. Gladiators is their second long possession. Just worked the ball methodically down the field. Stalled by penalties on the last try. Fourth down conversion coming here on this one. Hand off to Daniel straight ahead. He's got the first down and more. He might score. Pushed ahead and he's in the end zone. Six points. Touchdown Glads. Nice run by Daniels. Better job by the Gladiators offensive line. Pushing them all the way into the end zone. Gladiators are going to take the first lead here of the game against the Crosstown Rivals. Just under four minutes left in the half. Six nothing. Mirza Bodak's going to come on for the extra point, try and make it seven. That's going to push Daniels to almost 60 yards here in the first half. Still not quite over, but he's a Accounting for a bulk of this Gladiator offense. Snap is good. Hold is up. Kick is good. But there are flags down. We had somebody jump, so we're going to move it back five yards, make it a little tougher on Zabodak. But if you can get a repeat of that one, we'll be good. Kick is up and good. Seven zip glads. Could have been a little more. Had a chance to strike first down at the other end. Back in the first quarter. Couldn't capitalize after a couple of big penalties. The holding call was the worst of them. Moved them back. Created a second very long. Put a little pressure on the offense to throw it around a little bit. But seven point lead isn't too shabby here for the gladiators. Couple of nice tosses by Olin Keto in big situations and a lot of good running by Jaquad Daniels. Just running through the holes that his O-line's been giving him. So Bodoc's gonna be kicking off for the Glads here at his own 40, right to left. Jaguars got three guys back to receive. Burdett, Mitchell, and Brookins. And it's going to be an onside attempt here by the Gladiators, and they got it. They're going to pick it up and run straight ahead all the way down to the 35-yard line of the Jaguars. So the Gladiators try and sneak the onside kick, and it works to perfection. It's picked up, but you can't advance it, so it's going to be gladiator ball at the Jaguars 40 instead of all the way down to their 35. Jaguars did not look ready for it at all. I don't think anyone in the stadium was. Great kick. Just bounced right to the hands guy, picked it up, and ran it forward, but unfortunately for the gladiators, you can't do that, so... First and 10 on the 40. Olin Keto looking to throw. He's under pressure. He's uh, hit by one guy. Finally brought down. I thought he had a chance to spin out of it. It's going to be second long all the way down to the 45. So we we'll call maybe a second and 15. 3.30 left until the half. Looked like Olin Keto was trying to get it to Isaac Butler downfield, but... Just all kinds of pressure in his face. No chance to make anything happen. Clock continues to run towards that three-minute mark. Butler and Sorrell's out wide. Olenkito's going to drop back, and he's got Butler. Ten-yard pickup. 
erase that penalty and then five yards past the original line of scrimmage. We got a third and five coming up here. So I'm sure they'll take two shots at this first down either way. Barring a disastrous loss of sack or fumble or something, but. Two thirty until the half. Seven zip glads. Olin Keto back in the gun. He's got Butler and Sorrells out wide. He's going to roll out to the left looking for one of them. He's going to throw it to Butler who gets one foot in. They're going to no. I'm going to have to see the replay on that. Excuse me, that wasn't number eight. That was number nine, Marcus Dalton. Looked like he might have got his toe in, but the ref says otherwise. we got a fourth and five coming up. 2-11 left. Gladiator's got a fourth and five at the uh, Cedar Shoals 36-yard line after recovering an onside kick following their touchdown. Trying to make it a two-possession lead here going into the half. We got a timeout. Coach Ward wants to think this one over. Gladiators are going to have a go with this fourth and five. Sorrells to one side. Butler to the other. He looks to Sorrells and it's almost picked off, just broken up. It's going to be a turnover on downs, but that could have easily been six points going the other way. Broken up by Tyreekius Brookins. Cornerback for the Jaguars. Sniff that play out. Olin Keto telegraphed it a little bit. Dangerous, dangerous throw. Got away with one, and Gladiators happy just to turn it over here in Jaguar territory. 2.07 left until the half. That's the first throw that I think Olin Keto would really want back, but he's lucky he got away with it. Other than that, he's been pretty much on the money. So Smith back in the gun for the Jaguars. Cedar Shoal is going to call a timeout. really haven't had much success on offense since the beginning of the first quarter. Started out running it with Kelly. Tried to run a couple of options. Didn't pick up too much after their first drive, really. Neither their guy or our guy jumped. I'm not sure which yet. going to be on the defense so that'll help the Jags a little bit move it up to their 40 yard line first 
first and five for Cedar. They put a man in motion, and they're going to hand it to him. He's got five. He's got ten. He's, he might score. It's going to be a foot race all the way to the end zone, and he's going to win. It's going to be six points for the Gladiators, and that's number 16, Breon Mitchell, just on a wide receiver sweep. Breon Mitchell plays part-time quarterback, part-time receiver. I recognize that number and thought he might throw it, but he just took off down the field. Had a foot race with Derricott. And it wasn't too much of a race, really. 155 left until the half. So they didn't have to put together a drive. Just a big play here. They're going to go for two and try and get the lead for halftime. Smith back in the gun. They're going to blow it dead. Somebody jumped. The legal procedure is the call. They're going to move him back five. And I think they're still going to go for two here. Smith back in the gun. He's going to hand it off to Kelly out to the right side. Nothing doing at all there. Stop for a loss. So it's going to be 6-7. to seven. Gladiators leading. But Cedar Shoals strikes quick with a long 80-yard touchdown run. Breon Mitchell taking it the distance on a Wide receiver sweep. Nice play by the dual threat guy. See if they'll get him involved a little bit more now. Maybe with some run pass options or something. I wouldn't be surprised to see a trick play with that kid. Plays a little quarterback for them, so. His success on the ground, I could see opening up some options downfield with some kind of trick play. But for now, the Gladiators got the lead and a, a lot of optimism on offense at least. Daniels and Sorrells back to receive the kick, end over in, and it's going to split between them. Sorrells is going to race all the way back to the goal line where he picks it up, and he's out to the 10. He's going to be out to the 15, finally knocked out of bounds at the 20. Miscommunication there by those guys. I don't understand it. They're each standing at one of the hash marks, and it goes right in between them. Neither of them makes a move for the ball until it's already between them. Sorrell's going back to get it. It's not a chance for a great return there. So in a game where kicking is usually a weakness, you hope to start your possessions a little further down the field than your own 20, but Gladiators are going to have to march at 80 yards if they hope to score this half. They only got a minute 43 to do it. Handoff's going to go to Daniel straight ahead, and there's nothing there. He's got maybe one. Cedar Schultz is going to call a timeout. Put some pressure here on the Glads, try and get the ball back. Minute and a half left until halftime. Glads up by a point. They drove down the field and scored on a Jaquad Daniels touchdown run from 11 yards out. Jaguars just striked on a big play by. Breon Mitchell took it basically the full length of the field on a receiver sweep to almost even the score. Second and 
<laughs> Olin Kido back in the gun. He's going to look to throw. Got a double move going. He's going to look for Sorrell's pump fake, and he's going to throw it, and it's almost picked off. Threw it up in the air, and again, that was number six, Tyrekius Brookins, who has just missed having a pair of interceptions. Olin Keto, I'm not sure about that decision. Threw it into double coverage. I think that's the only guy he had available, but... I think Coach Ward might be telling him to throw that one away. Got a third and eight here. At the Glads, 21. Minute 23 and left till half. In an eye. They're going to play fake the Daniels. Olin Keeter rolling out to his right side. He's got Stokes, and he's going to be hit behind the first down marker and push ahead, and he's got the first down. He's got it. So at the very least, the Gladiators can run out the clock till the end of the half without giving it back to the Jaguars in good field position. Or they can take a strike down the field. But the clock continues to run, and it's approaching one minute inside a minute ten. So they set that ball pretty quick after the first down and got the clock rolling. 57, 56, 55. No urgency here by the Glads offense, so I think they might be content taking it into the half with a one-point lead and receiving the ball to start the second half. It looks like that's what they're going to do with the Jaquad Daniels run up the middle. Picks up a couple, and we might just see one more play. Well, hold on a minute. Gladiators are taking a timeout. 39 seconds left. <clears throat> I'm not sure why you take a timeout here unless there's some perceived weakness in the Jaguars defense that you want to try to expose here with a big play. Some kind of trick play they've been working on maybe for this kind of situation, but or maybe just try and throw it long a couple of times with Olin Keto to uh, Sorrells or Derricott or Butler or Campbell, one of those guys. It is second down and seven, 39 seconds left. Gladiators are out of timeouts now, though. Cedar's got one. Olin Keto going to drop back to throw, and he's looking deep down the field. He's trying to get it to Butler, and it's almost picked off again. It was underthrown, but there were three defensive backs converging on Isaac Butler. Plenty of opportunities for an interception there by Cedar. So the Glass got third and eight now. That entire play only took five seconds off the clock. So 33 seconds left here. If you don't pick it up here, you're going to have to punt. And that can always be an adventure. So they're going to toss it to Daniels. He's going to take it out to the left side. He's hit by one guy, bounces off a tackler, gets down to the 20, fumbles the ball in midair, but picks it up himself. And I believe he's going to push ahead for the first down. Looked like he lost control of the ball, but then fumbled it around his arms and then pulled it in secure and kept pushing ahead. He got the first down. 24 seconds left, out of bounds. First down clock is going to stop. Gladiators do not have a timeout. That is Dalton and Sorrells out to the right side. Receivers they are going to try and run a guy out on the field a little bit late. That's going to be Derricott. And there was something wrong with that, so we got a flag, and that's going to move us back five. So 
So we didn't get the snap off in time. All the way back to the 41. Got a first and 15, but five yards may not be too big right now. We're just looking for a big play. 24 seconds left until the half. Up by one. Olenkito rolling out to the right. He's looking for somebody to throw. He's going to throw it back across the field for a screen. He's got Daniels. Daniels has one blocker. He gets to the 50. He needs to get out of bounds, but he's tackled inbounds, and the clock's going to keep on running. 10, 9, 8. I think that's going to be the end of the half here for the Gladiators. And that's going to do it as the clock runs out. Daniels had a chance to get out of bounds with maybe a uh, Hail Mary opportunity left for the Gladiators. But great first half by the Gladiators starting running back. Big part of the reason why they got this one-point lead going into the half. Gladiators got the ball to start the second half, so not too worried about this possession. We'll be back in a few.
All right, getting ready for the second half here, this JV version of the Classic City Showdown. After two quarters, Clark Central's up on Crosstown rival Cedar Shoal 7-6. One-point game, but it feels like it could be a little bit bigger of a lead for the Gladiators. They've run about three times as many plays as the Jaguars. But the Jaguars connected on a, not connected, but scored on a a very long run by do-it-all receiver and quarterback, running back, Breon Mitchell. 60-plus yard run by the receiver on a receiver sweep. So that accounted for all the scoring. They went for two and didn't pick it up. So that's how the scoring has gone so far. Gladiators... Had a couple of long drives, scored on one, stalled out with penalties on the first one. Much of it on the back of the running of Jaqua Daniels, freshman tailback, having a big game here so far. A couple of receptions, about 70 yards on the ground. And he's walking back to the Gladiators' 20. Along with Sorrells to return here. Kick off by the Jags. End over end right down the middle of the field. Daniel's going to pick it up on the 10. He's out to the 25, the 30, 35, 40, 45. He's got a guy knocking out of bounds to the 50. Big special teams play by the tailback. Jaquad Daniels showing out really wherever he's put. Gladiator ball, first and ten, first and ten at the 50-yard line. Sun finally starting to creep down here. Pretty decent crowd here for the JV rivalry game. Some Cedar fans across the way. Glad's got a ball in the eye. They're going to hand it off to Jaqua Daniels straight up the middle. He's going to push ahead. Looked like he's going to be stopped for about four or five. He's going to keep pushing along with a few linemen and Desmond Sorrells there, pushing him all the way ahead for 14 yards. It looked like it was going to be a six-yard run. It turned into a 14-yard run. The pile just kept moving, and he kept those legs kicking and just did not go down. So Jaquad Daniels, over 80 yards right now. Got Sorrells and Butler to either side. Stokes with Daniels behind him. Hand off to Daniels again straight ahead. He's got five. He's got about nine yards before he's knocked out of bounds at the 26. Second very short for the Glads here at the 26-yard line. We've got a change up at tailback. That's Derek Cott, but Olenkito's going to look to throw, and he's got a man down the far side and overthrows everybody. He was trying to get it to Marcus Dalton. Threw into double coverage down there by the, the painted G on the goal line. Just overthrew all three of them. So it's going to be third and very short here. Daniels is taking a breather. It looks like they got Derek Cott in there. He's going to stay in it. Tailback. He seems to be all right. Just taking a rest here. Nine minutes left on the third. Two receivers out to either side. They're going to hand it off to Stokes straight ahead. He's got the first down to Moore. He's got five, six, seven yards all the way down to the 16-yard line. Big run by the fullback when they needed him. Nice third down conversion by the Gladiators, and they've done a great job all afternoon of just staying on the field. Not too many huge plays. Several of the 9 to 12 yard variety, but just a lot of 5, 6, 7 yard runs, picking up third downs, fourth downs, staying on the field. And that's when it starts to turn into big plays. Another handoff to Stokes straight ahead. 
as the defense tires a little bit. Sometimes you can bust them for a big play. The time of possession must be 4-1 to one right now. In favor of Clark Central, that is. About eight minutes left here in the third. Gladiator started this drive in midfield after a nice opening return by Jaquad Daniels, who just re-entered the ball game. Second, eight at the 15. Olenkito's going to roll out looking to throw. Everybody's covered, and he's going to take a sack. That's one he needed to throw away. You can see the pressure coming up in front of him and behind him. They're going to mark him all the way back down to the 20. We got a third and 14 coming up. Could have thrown that away for a third and eight. And I get that this is JV and long field goals are generally out of the question. We do have a timeout right now. But those are the kind of plays that can turn potential touchdown scoring drives into forced field goal opportunities. Just a small little decision not to throw it away there. Turns third and manageable into third and long here for the Gladiators. Seven twelve left in the third. And that was a gladiator timeout. Thinking over this third and 15 here, I expect if we can pick up maybe a third of it, go for it on fourth and eight, fourth and seven, try and get the touchdown. Field goals are a little bit of an adventure. This is JV, so long snapping, getting the hold down. Kicking with a little bit of a breeze. Just not as smooth as it is with the older kids. So. Olin Keto back in the shotgun. He's got Dalton and Sorrells out there. He's looking for somebody. He's going to get spun down for a sack all the way back down to the 27. That was number 36 for Cedar Shoals. Aaron Freeman, linebacker for the Jaguars, got in there, brought down Olin Keto, and now it's fourth and 20 plus. Ball is on the 27, and the offense is still on the field. Fourth and 20. So a punt might just go into the end zone. It's worth giving up the seven yards here for a chance to try and pick it all up on one play. Olin Keto back in the gun. They got to protect him here. He hadn't had much time to throw, and he's got all kinds of pressure. Brought down for a loss all the way back down to the 37. So he loses 10 more, and the Jaguars are going to take over after turnover on downs. It's going to be Cedar's ball moving right to left. Gladiators had the ball moving. Olin Keto took three straight sacks. And now it's Jaguars ball. In a game that feels like one where the Gladiators could put them away, they've been moving it down the field. Just haven't been able to piece it all together when they get down inside the glad in the Jaguars red zone so first and 10 at the 36 Smith is back in the gun and they had a receiver out wide jump I believe that was Mitchell who's had the one big play for Cedar Shoals today moving back to the 31 6-10 left in the third. First and 15. 
Dropping back, looking to throw Smith. He's going to run it straight ahead, and he's going to be brought down before he gets past the line of scrimmage. He's a yard shy of it, sacked at the 40. He dropped back, didn't see anybody open, tried to take off with it up the middle, and got caught. 5.50 left here. Second long. The lights are on here at Billy Henderson Stadium. But the sun is deadly. Shining right into this press box. Four receivers wide for the Jags. Running right looks like an option play. Smith's going to hold on to it. He's got about 10. He's got 15. He's almost got the entire. Back to the first down marker. They're going to mark him at the 45. Jags looking at third and one here at their own 45. Greg Smith standing back at his 40, waiting on the snap. He's going to hand it off to Kelly straight ahead, who's hit, gets away from a guy. He's going to be stopped just short. It's going to be fourth and one. Decision time here for the Cedar Shoals coach. Fourth and one in their own territory. Only down by a point. Offense is still out on the field. Looks like Cedar's going to elect to go for it here. Stop here would mean great field position for the Gladiators. Smith back on the 40, waiting for the snap. They send a guy in motion. Smith's going to hand it off to Kelly, and he's going to be hit. Spins away from a guy, almost gets back to the first down, doesn't get it. Stop short, turnover. Somehow Kelly stayed on his feet, did not go down, but he was finally stopped shy of the first down marker by a gladiator. I couldn't tell who. Either way, rolling the dice didn't work there for Cedar Shoals, and there's 340 left here in the third. Gladiator ball. In that whole bad series that pushed them out of field goal range and er erased a chance at scoring. Uh, you know, seems to be forgotten now. They're going to hand it off to Daniels, and he's got room. He's out to the 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. This guy's got an angle. Finally hit and brought down at the nine yard line. First and goal, Gladiators. And after that long run by Jaqua Daniels, my point about the mojo swinging back for the Gladiators seems to be pretty obvious. But before that, it seemed like the Jaguars might have caught a break with all of the the sacks that Olin Keto was taking. They're going to hand it off to Daniels, and he's going to walk into the end zone. Touchdown, Gladiators. Already up seven. See if they go for two. They're going to let go for one and make it an eight-point game if they connect here. Big hole for Daniels there. He just skated into the end zone. Thirteen six Glads. Three twenty left in the third. Zabodak on for the extra point. Good snap. Kick is up and away, and it's good. 14-6, eight-point game. Six. 
Cedar Shoals failed fourth down attempt. Really came back to bite them there. Gladiators pick it all up. Scoring three plays, mostly on the back of Jaquad Daniels, who's approaching 150 yards for the game already. Big swing of event for the Glads. They had a first down inside the Jaguars' territory, took three sacks, turned it back over to the Jaguars, who promptly had a turnover on downs of their own. And the Gladiators said, thank you very much for that momentum shift and punched it into the end zone. And they're going to go for another onside kick again. The ja Jaguars were not ready for it. Tyreek Derricott tried to make the play but knocked it out of bounds. They're going to say he recovered. He did not go out of bounds. There's a flag down, though. There's a flag on the field, and it looks like the head official is going to overrule or at least talk things over. I thought Derricott stepped out of bounds, and maybe that's what the umpire saw also. I don't know, but that's the second onside kick that the uh, Gladiators have run. And twice, Jaguars just standing there, man, just picking their nose, not ready for it at all. You'd think after the first one they might tell their guys come up or look for it. Because you could see Zabodak just kind of not pushing up towards the ball full speed like he's going to kick it deep. You could sense it was coming when he was approaching the ball and still their guys were looking for somebody to block rather than watching the ball. So we've had an explanation to the coaches. Let's get one for the crowd. It looked like the official motion first down and gladiator ball, but I think he uh, he meant Jaguar ball because apparently Derek Cott did step out of bounds and tried to recover it, so that's what the penalty was for. It's Cedars ball at their 43, and that perfect onside kick just went right through his hands and an opportunity wasted. Smith's going to take it on a quarterback keep around to the right side, and he has... What looked like nothing play, he was swallowed up, and then who was that? Number 29 for the Gladiators, Austin Johnson, just hopped on his back and rode him for like seven yards. Looked like a no-gainer there, turned into a nine-yard play. Pushed ahead by the Gladiators rather than his own men. Swallowed up and just made a play. So Greg Smith for nine, second short into Gladiator territory. 2.45 left in the third. Glad's up eight. They could have the ball, though. Smith's going to keep it again. He's going to follow his blockers out to the left side, and he's tripped up. It's going to be close. He only needed a half yard to get the first down, and it's going to be real close. I think they're going to bring out the chains and check this one out. I don't want to keep harping on that onside kick, but that was a play that really could have put them away. It makes me think of that Georgia-South Carolina game last year when Bakari Rambo was about a, a half a foot off sides, recovered an onside kick. Just beautifully timed. Defense wasn't ready for it but a penalty gave the ball to the other team. and That was a play where Derek Cott had it in his hands, just wasn't able to hold on to it, stepped out of bounds, and then pulled it in. But they would have had the ball moving in Jaguar territory. 
Now it's the other way around with a chance to tie. They're going to call it third and inches. Smith back in the gun. And he drops a snap. He drops and he's going to have to fall on it. It's going to be fourth and seven. Very high snap over his head. He had to jump for it and not able to hold on. Fourth and eight from their own 46. I feel like I can finally look through this window without any glare now. Sun is going down. Smith back in the gun. They got four receivers out, two to each side. He's going to drop back and look to throw. All kinds of pressure in his face. He's going to roll out to the right, and he's got a guy there. He hits him. First down, Jaguars. He's got room. He's got to miss one guy. He might score. It's going to be a touchdown for the Jaguars. Fourth and eight. They come up when it matters the most. And that's a 60-yard touchdown strike. Second of the game. Jaguars haven't managed much on offense, but... They've connected on two plays that have gone a combined 130 plus yards. Two touchdowns, 12 points, and now they got a two point conversion trying to even the score out in what's really been a lopsided game on the field. Time of possession, total yards, plays run, all in the Gladiators' favor. But here the Jaguars got one play to try and match them. Minute left in the third. They got four receivers out wide, Kelly and Smith in the backfield. Going to roll out right, looking to throw. Smith is hit as he throws, and it's going to be picked off. No chance to return it the other way. Picked off by number 20, Rayshon McCall. Gladiators hold on to that two-point lead. The Jaguars really taking advantage of some defensive lapses, making some huge plays that they had to make. Got to credit Smith on that pass. He was under pressure. He found a wide open receiver. 60 yard touchdown pass by Smith. And about a 65 or 70 yard touchdown run early in the game by hybrid receiver quarterback Breon Mitchell. Those two plays alone have accounted for more than all of the other yards their teams have had this had this game. Jags kicking off from their own 40. Daniels back, catches it at his own 18, straight ahead out to the 30, to the 35, runs over a Cedar guy, brought down finally at the 36-yard line. A minute left in the third. Glad's ball at the 37. If you count Daniels' receptions and special teams, return yards, punts, and kickoffs, he's pushing 230 right now. This team really depends on him. They hand it off to him again straight ahead. He bounces out right for 12 yards. If he breaks a big one at some point in this game, he could... Legitimately have 350 all purpose yards. First and 10 glads out to their own 49. 55 seconds left in the quarter. They're going to hand it to Stokes straight ahead. 
Not much there. He might get one, but there's a flag down. Holding against the Glads. Tripped him up a couple of possessions ago. Kept him from getting an opportunity at that end zone when they were knocking on the door. One of the reasons the Jaguars are still in this game. But to the Jaguars' credit, they have played cleaner football than the Gladiators. Fewer penalties. Part of that is probably because they've run fewer plays, but they haven't had a holding call yet. Gladiators have had two. One of them sabotaged the drive. They're going to hand it off to Daniels. Not much there. He's got falls ahead for maybe four or five. He was hit after two and been very good all night of getting yards after contact, pushing the pile ahead for a couple of more. That will probably be the last play of this quarter. Gladiators are going to take their two-point lead into the fourth. Looking at a second and 15. Ten minutes left in most of these guys' seasons here. Biggest game of the year, last one on the schedule. Ten minutes left, Glad's ball moving right to left at their own 41, second and 15. Olin Keto back on the shotgun. He's going to roll out to his left looking to throw all kinds of pressure, brought down for a sack. Third and 16, third and 17, all the way back to the 40. I don't know that Olin Keto had an opportunity to throw that one away. It only cost them two yards, but would have been nice to toss that one out into the Gladiators bench there. Instead, we're looking at another third and very long because of a holding penalty. It would be a shame to see that call sabotage this drive here. Olin Keto in the gun. He's going to hand it off to Jaquad Daniel straight ahead. He's got five, six, seven, eight yards. Not enough to pick up the first down, but maybe a reasonable chance to go for it on fourth. It's going to be fourth and about seven or eight. Jaquad Daniels picks up ten there. Lads are going to punt. Derek Cott, number six, back to punt, standing at his own 39. And we got another flag on the Glads. Probably going to move them back about five. Standing back at the 15 for the Jaguars, ready to receive this punt, is, of course, Breon Mitchell. Had that long touchdown run earlier in the game. He's standing at his own 22-yard line waiting on this one. 8.20 and rolling here. Derek Cott just gets off of the kick. Mitchell's going to come up to the 25 to catch it. Does not call a fair catch. Immediately brought down. 
tackle was made by number one, Jabrielle Parks for the Gladiators. Nice play there by Parks. Mitchell and Daniels both. Daniels for the Glads, Mitchell for the Jaguars, both pulling in punts. When I think most guys would have called a fair catch, hit right when they got it, still able to hold on to the ball. One turnover on downs by both teams. No fumbles or interceptions, no traditional turnover, so to speak. Cedar Shoals got it at their own 25. It's going to be Greg Smith back in the gun for the Jags. 8-14 left. Option out to the right side. He's going to keep it out to the 30-35. Finally brought down at the 37-yard line. First down, Jags. Jaguars haven't been able to sustain drives, but they got a few guys on their team really capable of making a huge play. Quarterbacks won. Of course, Mitchell. Seven thirty five left. Option out to the left side. Smith's going to keep it and run straight ahead. He's got a little bit of room in front of him. He's got another first down. <laughs> Two runs and about 23 yards for Smith. Jaguars just shy of midfield here. First and 10 at the 48. They're going to snap it just inside of seven minutes. Smith's going to keep it and run straight ahead, and he's going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Big play there by Antron Staten. Big number 90. Second and nine, six ten left in this one. Smith back in the gun, three receivers out. One to the far side. He's going to roll out to the right, looking to throw, and he's got a guy, number nine, and hit immediately, but not after he picks up six yards on the play. He hit Jeff Rice on that one, junior wide receiver. Third and five coming up. Balls at the Glads, 47. Big possession for the Gladiators defense here. Jaguars with a chance to take the lead and win this one. Feels like it should be going the other way. Gladiators just haven't capitalized. Jags have an opportunity to do so. They're going to run option to the left side. He's going to pitch it back to his guy, run straight ahead. It's going to be a four-yard loss. They're going to be looking at a fourth and nine or fourth and ten here. He threw it back to Kelly. Kelly had nowhere to go. Defense swallowed them both up on that play. Big play there by number 49, Marshawn Lattimore for the defense. With only 440 in this one, Jaguars are going to go for it. Fourth down and 10, 420 left. Smith back in the gun. He's looking to throw. 
He throws deep down the right sideline. He's got a guy open, and he's out of bounds. No catch. And he's holding it up like he's got it. I was afraid the official was going to miss the call from deep down the field, but he got it right. It was a catch by Snoop Burdett, but he came down just outside. And it's going to be first and ten glads in Jaguar territory. They're 49. Chance to put this one away with 418 left in the ball game. Big exhale from this side of the stadium. Connecting on that play would have put the Glads D under a lot of pressure. Handoff's going to go to Daniels. Immediately kicks it out to the right side, and he's got six yards real quick. Brought down at the 44. Clock continues to run. Three forty-five. In an eye. Hand off to Daniel straight ahead again. And he might have the first down. Third and less than a yard here. Three minutes left in the ball game. Three minutes left in these guys' season. Gladiators in an eye. Hand off to Daniel straight ahead. He doesn't have much, but he might have enough. He does have enough. That's going to be a first down. And Cedar's going to have to start thinking about using some timeouts. They're only down two. If they can get it back here with a little bit of time left, they have got a shot. They've got guys that can stretch the field. They've only scored on two long touchdown plays, one about 60 yards, the other 70. They just need to give their team a shot. 2.30 left, first and 10 gladiators, up by two. Jaquad Daniels tries the inside, tries to bounce it back out. He's swallowed up, no gain. Timeout, Cedar. They're going to say Daniels lost one, second and 11. Jaquad Daniels had a monster game so far. He's had a couple of receptions. He's had about 250 yards on the ground. He had a 40-yard run earlier set up a touchdown. And on the next play, he punched it in after 10 more. So the Gladiators are in an eye. Stokes and Daniels. Play fake to Daniels. Olenkito's going to look to throw. He's going to keep it running around the left side. He's got about six. He finally runs out of bound at the 31, 32. So Olenkito... Holds on to the ball, decides to run, but instead of sliding, runs out of bound, and that's going to stop the clock. It's going to be a third and four left here for the Gladiators. Cedar gets to save a timeout, and if they can stop the Glads here, they will have a shot. Going to be Daniel straight ahead. He's going to push, and he might have the first down. It's going to be close. I 
think they're going to say it's a. I'm not sure what's going on. I think there's an official timeout here to measure. Fourth down and maybe the length of a football left. If the Gladiators can pick it up here, Yellow Helmets are going to go home happy. If not, Jags will have one last opportunity. 2-10 left in this game. And I know Coach Ward does not want to let Mitchell get the ball back in his hands with a chance to win it. I expect we're going to see Daniels. I think the Jaguars expect it too. It's going to be a keeper. Olin Keto straight up the middle, and he's got it. He just ran straight ahead and upright. When he moves up to varsity... You're going to tell him, keep your head down and protect that ball and get down. You don't need five yards, dude. It's lucky nobody got a hat on the ball there. It could be blue ball going the other way. Minute 40 left in the game. Hand off to Daniel straight ahead. He's got a hole down to the 20, down to the 18-yard line. Tackled in bounds, but there's a flag. A late flag. It's going to be holding against the Glads. Glad's ball all the way back to their 34. Call it first and 18. Hand off to Daniel straight ahead. Brought down after a gain of two. Maybe one. Cedar's going to call another timeout. And that is their last timeout. Minute and five seconds left on the clock. Second and 20. Glad's just have to take a take a knee here. It's only second down. 65 seconds left. can burn through a couple of play clocks here in the victory formation. So now the Gladiators are going to take a timeout. Gladiators only up two. Feels like it could be more. But if they can hold on to the ball, they'll walk out of here with a W. Last game of the season for all of these guys, except maybe a few that might walk up to varsity for the end of their schedule but likely the end of their playing time until next fall 
Nice to get a win over the Crosstown rival to end the season here. Olinkito is going to take it and run straight ahead. Awkward looking play. I'm not sure what he was trying to do. Just ends up in the fetal position at the end of that one. Clock's going to run. Cedar can't stop it now. Third and long. Thirty-six, thirty-five, thirty-four, thirty-three. They're gonna snap this thing with maybe twenty-six seconds left on the clock, and that'll be the end of it. Gladiator's gonna walk out of here with a W. Olenkito takes it in, and that's gonna do it. Big win here for the Glads. Jaguars did a good job of staying in this one. Gotta credit their guys, had a couple of playmakers who Made big plays when they needed them. Kept them in the game. 14-12. If they could have connected on either one of their two-point conversions, we'd be looking at overtime here. But didn't work out for them on a couple of plays. And the Gladiators are going to walk out of here. in the season with the win in the Classic City Showdown. I know those guys and the coaches are happy to beat the guys from the other side of town. Huge game. Can't say enough about Jaqua Daniels. Without him, this could have been a totally different ball game. Offense really reliant on him. All-purpose yards. He was over 300 yards for the game. Had a couple of catches. Rushed for well over 200. Great return on a kickoff. Brought it out to midfield. Really changed field position there for the Gladiators. Kid had a huge game for the Glads and... Really a huge game by him. He might get called up to varsity for a little bit, but he's got a bright future and uh, really set the tone for this one by running hard, not going down, and defense on the other side just couldn't match him. Great game for the Gladiators, and that's going to do it. It's been fun. Great JV season for these guys, and this is the way they wanted to go out, and it worked out for them.